what's up, what's up? How y'all doing today? Pastor Tay. Pastor D. Coming to you guys live. Um, so we're starting this new series called 31 Days of Marriage. Yes. Uh, first of all, we want to apologize for um yesterday we were trying to go live while we were in Jamaica. And uh, we did church service live. So if you guys missed church service, please follow our page, Open Wings Ministries, uh, on Facebook. And you guys will be able to watch the replay of that. So we're going to give you guys an opportunity to come on and join us in, chime in. I'm telling you, if you know anybody that's struggling in their marriage, chime them in, tag them, share this live with them. Because this, this live is going to be explosive. We're going to be with you guys 31 Days of Marriage is our new series. It's going to be Mondays through Fridays, no Saturday and Sunday. Of course, we want you guys to tune in on Sunday uh, for our Sunday services. But uh, we're, we're, we're here to share wisdom, to share life, to share the word of God with you guys um, and to answer a few questions. So let me explain uh, what 31 Days of Marriage is. We're going to be talking about issues uh, in within marriages. We're going to be providing solutions that are, uh, I believe, that are inspired by God and uh, praying for you guys. But also, we're going to allow you guys to ask us questions, and we're going to try to answer those questions as best as uh, we know how. Exactly. So, the, so one of the most important things in marriage is is beginning again right and see it's important to hit the reset button and oftentimes in marriage you got to look yourself in the mirror and you have to be willing to make the necessary adjustments for the betterment of the marriage my marriage is my most valuable asset you know my marriage is, is, is important to me but it always wasn't this way. I remember years, it was years and years ago where our marriage was so toxic all we did was argue and when we argued Whoever, whoever, we, we tried to out, you know, whoever said one thing worse, the next person will say something worse than what the other person said. Right. But at one point, we had to, we had to grow to a point where like, look, we can't continuously go on this way because now we, we you know, we have kids. We don't want to continually raise our kids in a toxic environment. Right. So their perception of a marriage is not healthy, is not good because all they seen us do every day was argue and fuss. So we had to make a decision. Look, okay, I love you. I know I want to be with you, but I got to be willing to make the necessary adjustments. And so many times in marriage, if you don't get to the root of the issue, the issue is going to arise again. See, when you sweep an issue under the rug, when you have a disagreement, you can just go back under that rug and pull that same issue back out. But right. once you get to the root of the issue, you uproot the issue from the root. That issue can no longer bother you. It can no longer resurface. Why? Because you deal with the root of the issue. You can no longer deal with situations and circumstances on the surface and expect yeah. for it to go away. Yeah, and I think that we have to understand that God has approved our begin again. And so many times we want to stay stuck in the past because we don't want to deal with past issues. Oh, well, you should be over that by now. No, mm -hmm. I'm not over it because I don't feel like you um, have learned from that issue. If that makes sense, sometimes people uh, continuously hurt you and then feel like you're supposed to let them hurt you. Right. You're supposed to let them continuously hurt you. And, and God forbid, the devil is a lie. God wants you in a whole marriage. And uh, a, a young lady just said, you know, um, let's read her question. She said, what is the best thing to do when you're just engaged, uh, just getting engaged? I'm telling you that being engaged, being single, being married, tuning into this will give you wisdom beyond what you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times people run away from when they say wed wedding or marriage, or it's not just for married people. It's for engaged mm -hmm. couples. It's for people that may have been widowed. It's for people mm -hmm. that may have gone through a divorce. This is wisdom that will help right. you. One of the things that I would advise is that you pray together. Mm -hmm. That's one. That you make sure that you prioritize marriage counseling. And when you have marriage counseling, you don't want to tell a lie in marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you bring all of the issues that you have forward so that mm -hmm. you guys won't have any issues right. uh, from any unresolved issues moving 
uh, into the marriage. And one of the most important things I would, would encourage you to do is pay attention to the signs. Yeah. Pay attention to the warning signs and, and don't ignore them because, you know, you engage or you may you may have sent out the invitations yeah. and you're so excited about being married. Pay attention to the warning signs and whenever they show you who they are, believe you believe them. Right. You believe them because the worst thing to do is get married because, you know, you feel like you're obligated because you didn't send out the wedding invitations. You don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be embarrassed, but you don't want to be married to someone who you don't like you don't want to be married to someone who you who showed you who they were and you didn't listen and now you're sleeping with the, uh, a monster in in your house feel like prison every day you wake up you're miserable you don't want a marriage like that so pay attention to the warning signs and, pay attention and you don't want to be um in a in a situation where you're suffering silently right because you didn't open your mouth and say this is not for me mm mm-hmm. mhm um, you don't want to also, you don't want to be connected to some, connected to somebody that strings you along. Uh, right. if you're engaged, how long will you be engaged? Uh, has the, has the date been officially set, you know, mm -hmm. uh, be on one accord in your relationships. Uh, as we mentioned in our previous lives earlier, uh, singles, uh, you know, by the third date, what, where this is going, right? Is it, is it going to lead to a dead end? Is it a waste of my time? Mm -hmm. Um, does this person value me? Does this person value God? And, and if they do value God, which God are they talking about? Are they talking about Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Are they talking about Jesus? These are the things that you need to identify. Uh, how good is their credit? Is your credit as good as you're expecting this person's credit to be? Do they stay with their mama? Mm -hmm. uh, do you live with your mama? These are things that we need to identify so that we're on one accord. You got to make right. sure that you're not holding a standard that you can't produce yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I want him to have good one A1 credit. I want him to make six figures. I want him to do this and him to do that. Okay. What do you bring to the table that could add value, uh, to the relationship spiritually, right. mentally, and financially as well? Mm -hmm. God wants us whole. So you got to make sure that you're whole and healed from any brokenness from any previous relationships before you can join together and become one in the new one. Right. And, and that that's important. Yes. Like, like just paying attention to all that and just, and just make sure you marry someone who you can grow with. Marriage is a beautiful thing, yes, especially when you marry the right person, because the goal is not to, to be married for 30 years, but you married for 30 years unhappy. Right. The goal is to be happily married forever. You know, you got people who got a, a, a lasting marriage, but it's not a fruitful marriage. They right. come home, they barely speak to their husband, they barely speak to their wife. It's, the marriage is lifeless. You just coexist and... You just roommates with benefits every now and then. Right. Don't nobody want a marriage like you want a marriage where you could be proud of that. You know, your husband, you know, your wife got your back regardless of, of, of what's going on. They're going to protect right. you. They're going to always give you the advantage and not try to take advantage of you. That's the marriage you want. You want your marriage. You want right. your, your, a fruitful marriage. What is fruit? Fruit is produce. So what is your marriage producing? You want to, uh, uh, to build a, a good environment to raise kids in where your kids see a healthy marriage. Right. So when they get older and it's time for them to get married, they say, I want a, 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 um, a marriage like my mom and dad because I've seen how my dad treated my mom and how my mom treated my dad and how they treated us. So that's the type of marriage right. I want. Not a marriage eat every, they can't go to sleep at night because it's fussing and hollering and screaming and fighting. It's, it's, it's an unhealthy relationship. You you want to make sure that your that your home is a sanctuary. Your home is supposed to be your refuge, not a place where you feel miserable at. Right. And so many times people stay in marriages so long because it's comfortable or because it's convenient or because it's familiar, but you're miserable, you're unhappy. And each day you wake up, you, you, you're you waking up, oh, I'm still in this 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 lifeless, unfruitful marriage. Right. Don't nobody want a marriage like that. But again, you have to watch the words. Like in the beginning, when me and my wife first got married, we got married <laughs> at the age of 21 and 22. We had no premarital counseling, Business. never seen a successful marriage. So our marriage was toxic. Although we loved each other, it was still toxic. So mm -hmm. our marriage is the way it is today. It's because we spoke it into existence. In the beginning, we were, even if we had a bad argument the night before, mm -hmm. we would get up every morning, hold hands, and we would say this marriage confession that my wife wrote. Although any everything that we were saying, 
It was nothing that we was living at the time, but we just kept saying it. And then our marriage just kept getting easier, easier and easier, and better. better. It was better. And lighter. And, you know, it, it just it, it kept growing. Why? Because we were speaking those things that be not as though they were. But if you keep telling your husband, you can never do this. You can't provide for us. You can't take care of us. You no good. You can't do well. You did. You you're you're getting what you're right. speaking. Right. So you gotta change your language. You gotta change your tone towards your marriage. You gotta change your words and your confession towards your marriage. If you want your marriage to be fruitful. And then you got to identify who you married. Um, you, when he chose you and asked you to marry him, there was a decision that was made. So what are you willing to do if, <coughs> if uh, worse comes before better? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice if worse comes before better? Mm -hmm. Because those are situations. There are going to be times when better doesn't come. Right. <laughs> Worse comes. Right. And you've got to be willing to do what's necessary mm -hmm. because you took vows before God. So in honoring God, you honor your marriage. Right. And um, I had a lady act came to me and she was like straight up. Um, my husband and I have three kids, but I'm not sexually attracted to him. I, I don't really desire to have sex. And I was just telling her, I said, well, have you prayed? about that have you and she said pastor tay i didn't know i could pray about that i said anything concerning your marriage anything that's interrupting the marriage is an enemy mm -hmm. so you got to get down to the root cause to why you're not attracted to him sexually because clearly at one point you were because you guys have three kids together so to make a long story short she just began to do that and she began to see results see there's power in prayer and there is mm -hmm. power in the word of God, but there's also power in agreement. You got to tell people things that's going on in your marriage that are going to pray for your marriage, right. not pray on mm -hmm. your marriage or use vital information against you. You have to be careful. You cannot tell everybody your business. That's one thing about us. We always say no details necessary and people get offended with that. Like, how do you know what to pray if you don't know the details of the marriage? Well, what I do know is that the prayer of agreement still works. And if God knows the details, all he needs is for us to be in agreement with the solution. Mm -hmm. Me knowing your business is not going to be uh, a part of the solution. Me knowing your business is not going to be a part of whatever I can do or bring to the table. What I'm bringing to the table is the Holy Spirit and being able to pray. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. And, and, and you don't need details to do that. So you got to mm -hmm. be careful when people are saying, girl, What's going on? Oh, nothing. Just pray. Mm -hmm. If somebody tell me just pray, I'm doing just praying. I'm not asking them their business. I'm not saying, um, oh, you should be doing this and that, that. No, I'm saying first, let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying about your marriage. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, what do you think needs to be done concerning your part? Because you're the wife. You came to me. The husband might come to him. And the first thing we're going to do is say, let's identify triggers. Right. Let's set up counseling. Are you guys willing to make the investment to go to the next level? Have you signed up for love under the influence? Um, what is love under the influence? It is a tool, the magnificent mar marriage blueprint. That's what we call it. Right. So those are the things that I'm going to say. And then you have people that will take information from you and use it against you. Earlier today, we talked about not being a coward in your relationship. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't be too afraid to talk to your wife, but you talk about your work, talk to your work wife about your real wife. Right. We got to stop this foolishness. Mm -hmm. Like there's no such thing as a work husband and a work wife, right. because you know what you're doing? You're speaking and you're releasing things that one day work wife going to end up being in your bed or somebody else's bed and you're trying to figure out how we got here. You spoke it. Spoke it. You spoke it. That's how we got here. We got here because you kept playing saying, Oh, that's my work wife. That's my work husband. Oh, we this, we that. No, no, no. You got to make sure that you don't open doors that the enemy will happily slam right in your face. Right. So you don't want to have conversations as a coward uh, about your husband or your wife to somebody else. And you have not brought this issue to your spouse. Mm -hmm. My wife can't cook. My wife um I don't like her sex. Well, you like something, you ask her to be your wife. 
Right. So what is she doing now that was different from back then? You got to make sure that you don't allow the devil to talk to you about what you say God blessed you with. Right. God bless you with the new house. You complain about the new house. God bless you with the new job. You complain about the new job. God bless you with your wife. You complain about your wife. Instead of going to your wife saying, baby, I don't want you to do it this way. Do it that way. Mm -hmm. And then one thing as couples... As, as couples, you're supposed to eliminate your spouse's weakness. Right. So if your spouse struggles in the area of finances, you don't post a point out there flaw and say, look, you yeah. can't do this right. You don't do this right. You got to help eliminate it. That's how the marriage grow and go to the next level. Look, I know you struggle in this issue. Okay, me being your husband or me being your wife, what can I do to eliminate that issue and take some of the pressure off you? Right. I don't know what you're dealing with in this area. How can I help? How can I be of aid? Not amplifying yeah. the situation or magnifying the situation or making them feel worse than what they already feel. What you got to do as a husband or what you got to do as a wife, you have to identify the problem. And once the problem is identified, now you're working towards the resolution. Mm -hmm. You're working towards the solution. Not pouring gas on, not amplifying, not making them feel bad because they can't do something better than you can do it. Or even bringing up a past relationship saying, well, my ex-husband or my ex-wife, they could cook better than you. Or my ex-husband, he was more handier than you. He can fix this. I wouldn't have to call somebody else to fix this. He, you know, we, we, we're not going to do that because when you do that, that's just, that, that just diminishes their, their effort of them trying right. to become better right. in that area. Right. Sometimes, you know, you just got to take a deep breath and just think about what you're going to say before you say it. Oftentimes, yeah. we allow our emotions to control the way we think. And then, you, then you, you allow your emotions to have you to speak something that right. you really don't believe. Or you allow your emotions to make you make a permanent decision off a temporary feeling or a temporary emotion. Yeah. Never make a permanent decision based on how you feel at the moment. Sometimes you just got to yeah. take a deep breath and analyze the situation because when you make a permanent decision off a temporary feeling right. or a temporary emotions, the next day you might feel different, yeah. but you already made a permanent decision based on how you felt at that moment. And it could cost you everything. Emotional decisions are not only reckless, they are very very expensive. Right. Tammy said, um, we can't expect this out of, out of them if they are not God fearing. That's um, true. But you have to keep in mind, did you know they were not God fearing before you married, before you married them? That's the thing. And the Bible says that the husband is sanctified unto the wife. That's what Paul said in Corinthians. So what are you willing to do to save his soul? And are you willing to be the, the instrument that God uses to bring him to soul salvation? And, and, and this is one a thing that people got to realize yeah. too. When you get married, the only thing that changes is the woman last name. Yeah. If, if the, the, the person who you married, that's the, I mean, the person who you was dating, they're not going to change just because you get married. That's, that's, right. that's who they are. You get what I'm saying? So unless, unless they they, they y'all change together in the things of God, but you can't expect just because you married somebody that that's going to make them different. That's going to make them change. Right. If they was cheating before you got married, they're going to be cheating while, right. when you're married. That's just how it is. So you got to make sure that that what, what 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 was you putting up with that or were you was you allowing that? Did you even know prior right. to getting married? And oftentimes, you know, the person doesn't change. I think that um, singles, it's very important that you know uh, somebody's status, uh, religious status. If they believe in Jesus and if they don't believe in Jesus, you have a decision to make. You do. Because you don't want to be unequally yoked because that brings about a lot of division, division and an interruption of peace. Then you have children that bring about confusion because they don't know who God to believe in. So you got to keep that in mind. Then you need somebody that's going to be structured and strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Bible says love. The, the husband is to love Christ as Christ love, love the wife as Christ love, love the, church. the church. And we know what Christ did for the church. Christ laid his life down for us. He laid his life down. He became the lesser in the natural so that we be, 
became greater in the supernatural. It was his grace that was sufficient, that provided everything that we have access today. And it reconciled us back to the father. Right. So, so one thing about it, y'all, here's the thing. No marriage is perfect. No marriage is perfect. It's not, but it can be perfected, can by, be the word perfected of God. by the word of God. And you want to marry somebody who you can grow with, yes. who you can build an empire with. Yes. You only get, look, you only get one shot at life. You know, it, it, there's no do-overs in life. Yes. So you want to make sure you go through life being happy, isn't it, man? You're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to enjoy each other, travel the world with each other, just, yes. just, just enjoy life and, and live life to the fullest. You don't want to be married to somebody you feel like you tied down to, yeah. or when you come home, you miserable. Like when I'm going away from my wife or my wife, I, I miss my wife. Not when, when, oh, your wife called your husband, call what do he want or what <laughs> she want. You look at the phone, yo, what they want now. Oh, you know, you, you're not excited to come home. Your house is supposed to be your sanctuary. It's supposed to be your refuge, yeah. your place of peace. And some people don't have no peace in their house. Why? Because their their husband or their or their wife, they're not one, they're not a team, they're roommates. You don't want to be deceived. Right. Um, pay attention. And it's different between a roommate and a teammate. A teammate gonna do everything for the betterment Amen. of the marriage, for the betterment of the team. A teammate is not trying to compete against their wife or compete against their husband. A teammate, if, if I if, if I'm not getting a shine and my wife getting a shine, I'm gonna celebrate. Why? Because it's my wife. It's one. And if my wife to become it, right, one. and if my wife make more than me, won't no, won't nobody know unless we tell them. Because we're on the same team. And we we can say that because we've been in that situation before. Right. Can you shed light on that, baby, when you were unemployed yeah. five years? Five years from 2008, I left my job. You know, God told me to leave to leave my job. So I left my job in 2008, and I was unemployed for five years. So I helped my wife start her business, launch her business. Her business was doing exceptionally well. But at that time, she went and said, okay, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Uh, tr uh, treating me lesser than a man. The, res the respect was the same, if yeah, not more. Why? You talk about you were still over the finances. And I, and I was still over the finances, e even even in, in that season. Why? Because our relationship, we made Jesus our foundation. And once we made Jesus the foundation, we built our friendship was the frame. Our friendship, we, we attached the frame to the foundation. Amen. And oftentimes, if your foundation is not stable, if your foundation is not secure, you can't attach your, your friendship to something that's not certain, that's something that's not stable. So you have to make sure that your friendship is stable. And our friendship was stable. We don't argue about, we back, back even back then, we didn't right. argue about money. And now we are living days we pray for where money is not even an issue. That's the least of our concern is money, but we have to grow to that point. Right. And God has been so faithful to us. Why? Because back in those days when we, we couldn't stand each him. other, we were we was faithful to God and we were speaking those things that be not as though they were. Even when our marriage was in the pit. Man, divorce was a language. The, divorce was a common <laughs> word in our household, Ooh, but we weathered the storm. Why? Because even though when we was toxic for each other, we was always good friends. Yeah. And 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 even though when when we couldn't see eye to eye, our friendship is what sustained the marriage. So if yeah. you're not friends with your spouse, it's gonna be hard to sustain the marriage. Man, out of anybody in the world, man, my wife is my. I'd rather hang with her because one thing about it. We have so much fun together. We joke. We laugh. We just enjoy each Quite other's company. Much. So it, it's a good thing when you are married to your friend. When yeah, you it truly, is. And, and it's not. And what we are telling y'all is nothing we read out of a self help book. We, we're not trying to paint this picture that, that our marriage. No, our marriage was in the pit. Divorce was a common <laughs> language in our house. We used to cuss each other out cuss. every single cuss. day. Every day it was a toxic, a toxic environment. Talk about each other. Family member didn't Did care. I mean, it, it was bad. I put his clothes out on the porch. Man, on the porch. I mean, so, <laughs> so we're not trying to paint this picture that our marriage is... That's why we be transparent. <laughs> so what we're telling y'all is substance behind. It, yeah. it, it's nothing we read out of a self-help book. We're telling you what we did to get our marriage to the days that that we that we, that we used to dream of. Well, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Um, 
our marriage, we got married in 2001 and I stopped cussing in 2003 of March, 2003. And my husband got delivered in one day. In June. In June of 2003. 2003. So that was the begin, beginning of the turnaround from mm -hmm. us. But we still had unresolved hurt. Mm -hmm. We still had a lot of brokenness. So that's when the Holy Spirit gave me the confessions, which is now Confessions of a Praying Wife. And you guys can get that on Amazon, Spotify. Now it's blessing women all across the globe. Uh, it's, it's so powerful. Even women that have been barren have been uh, inspired and have been, God has opened their wombs just by changing the words and all of that stuff. So anyway, the powerful thing about that was in my deliverance time, I never judged my husband. Mm -hmm. I let God work on me. I wasn't self-righteous, if that makes sense. Oh, pointing out his flaws and imperfections. Now, guess what? That was something that I did previously because I didn't know God. I didn't know him. I didn't know like you, you, hey, you do know when you down him, when you bash him, you bashing yourself because you're one. And when I tell you God is so good because he showed me me. And he began to do the work in me. And I didn't realize that my husband was actually paying attention. So you can, you can take it from there, baby. Yeah, so I, one thing about it, like I said before, our, our marriage was real toxic. So my wife, you know, used to always cuss. It was, it, it was just an <laughs> unhealthy relationship. But, but outside of that, like I said, our friendship in, in those times, it carried us. When we didn't want to hear, okay, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. But one thing we always did, if I would leave home just to get some fresh air because I'm upset, I always came back home. Never stayed out. Always came back home. So sometimes when you when, when you're in a heated argument, it's okay to leave and get some fresh air. But make sure you always come back home that right. same night. Not leave and get in somebody else's and bed. And not leave and get in somebody else's bed. Make sure you know your bed and only sleep in your bed right. that, that you have a license to be in. <laughs> because one thing about it, you, you uh, and, and sometimes, well, the majority of the time, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. That that's it, you know. We we she hurt me, so I'm gonna say the the, the something to hurt her. So it was toxic. But Ooh. one day we just made a decision, regardless of of what we went through or how bad we argued the night before. We're gonna get up. We're gonna hold hands, and we're gonna look each other in the eyes, and we're gonna say this marriage confession. Ooh. And although the confession was nothing that we was living at the present moment. But months went by, years went by, and we looked up. We wasn't arguing. We was loving on each other. We was being respectful. Our marriage has just went to, to, to a whole nother level. Why? Because you have to be willing to do the routine maintenance in your marriage. That's just like your car, your car that takes you to work, that takes you to right. take your kids to football <laughs> practice, chili, whatever it is. Every 3,000 miles, you get the oil change. Why? Because you value that car. Likewise, it's the same thing when it comes to your marriage. You have to be willing to do the routine maintenance right. within your marriage. Why is there so many marriages on the side of the road? Because when it was time to get the oil changed, when they heard their wife make that noise that it, that it wasn't familiar or it wasn't common, they ignored the noise. And now the noise is getting louder and louder. And now they just, it, it just your, your wife just blew up. Why? Because you ignored, you, 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 you neglected to do the routine right. maintenance to keep your marriage on the road. Right. You got to do the routine maintenance because whatever you value, you are treasure. Whatever holds value in your life, take you'll take it. care of it. So my marriage holds value in my life. So I make sure my marriage is taken care of. Now, I'm not saying I'm the perfect husband, but it's not too many things that my wife can complain about. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to our marriage. I, think, I, you, I don't think I'm perfect either. But I think that you are the closest thing to it um, because you you work in whatever area I I um, mentioned to you. I'm not going to say complain because complaining uh, changes nothing and confession changes everything. But I do think that you do go the extra mile to take the weight off, yeah. especially this past year. Last year, Pastor D was hit by a tractor trailer and. 
Uh, he's been home with us ever since. And it's been such a blessing. During the pandemic, a lot of homes were broken because a lot of marriages they did were, not have friendships. And, and that, yes, they were forced to spend time with each other. Yes. And they realized they didn't really they didn't have nothing in common. And they didn't, like, they each didn't like each other. So, So my job as her husband... It's not solely to make her happy. That's just a small fraction of my job. My job as her husband is to push her into the will of God for her life. Not to hold her back. Not to say, well, I don't want you doing this. I don't want... No, my job is not to hold her back. My job is to help her flourish in any area of her life. And so many times, couples or husbands, they don't want their wife to do this. They don't want their wife to do that. Why Why? why you want to hold your wife back? Allow your right. wife, because at the end of the day, that your, that's not your wife for you to control. That, that's that's not your, your, your daughter. It's your wife. It's your partner. Right. So your job as her husband is to push her into the will of God and for her life. And the day that she feels sad, to remind her of who she is. No, no. This is what God called you to do. And, 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 and with, with everything in me, I'm going to help you reach your full potential. Right. It's not my job when you tell me, well, I'm fitting to go start this business and say, no, nah, I don't think you should do that. No, nah, I don't know. And you're not saying it because it's not a good idea. You're saying it because you don't want her to outshine you or right. you in some type of competition <laughs> with your wife. How are you competing with your wife? And you got to also make sure that um, you want to be the best. Uh, we could have easily said we didn't have parents in our lives. We didn't see successful marriages. That could have been our excuse or we could have used that as our opportunity, our right. opportunity to be better parents than what we experienced. Mm -hmm. Our opportunity to have a fruitful relationship instead of a lasting relationship. When people say, oh, y'all been married 20 years, we tell them straight up, well, the first Five years were the worst. Were the worst. The first five years of our marriage was the worst. And um, hold on one second. Okay. So one one thing about it, um, during that time, we didn't know how to do what was necessary to be successful Christians, yet alone be successful husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So I think that on this series, 31 days of marriage, we're going to be getting in the word of God. We're going to be taking questions from you guys and uh, shout out to all of you guys that have followed us on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube so you guys can go view Marriage Mondays, binge watch this stuff, sign in to Love Under the Influence, www.loveundertheinfluence.com. It is the marriage blueprint. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys may have relationships, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, engaged, married. Some of you guys may want to go back and get your wife. You may have been divorced and you, you too afraid to say, I want to come home, mm -hmm. but I don't want to come home as, as the, 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 the person I was. Right. These are tools that will help you bring life, light and wisdom mm -hmm. to your life. So if you guys have not followed us, Follow us on YouTube right now, Open Wings Ministries. Follow us on YouTube. You guys will see so much information. If you're uh, dealing with in-law situations, if if your husband, um, wife, I mean, I'm sorry, mom acts like she's the wife, these are issues that we talk about mm -hmm. and issues that will help you uh, achieve a higher goal in your marriage. You do not have to stay stuck. Stay stuck. God has made resources available. This 31 day of marriage, this series is going to bless your socks off. Mm -hmm. But don't go back and tell your spouse, you should have saw this. No. Engage them. Invite them mm -hmm. in. Say, will you watch this with me yeah. for the next 31 days? That's it. Cut That's it right. off. Cut it off. Don't say you need to watch. Mm -hmm. Look. Because the devil will use what you say against you. Right. You can have every good intention to just be be there for your spouse, to love on your spouse. You, you see yourself walking out of this marriage and you want to give it uh, another try. Okay, let's do something different in order to get something different to happen. Exactly. You don't want your spouse to feel foreign to Jesus. Mm -mm. You want your spouse to see Jesus in you. 
The love of God is in you. It's in your heart. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to do something different in order to get something different to happen. What you think, babe? Yeah, that's powerful, man. So yeah. it, it's nothing wrong with hitting the reset button. Like I said, marriage is Begin a beautiful again. thing, especially when you marry the right person. Like I say all the time, the husband... It's my job to, to control the thermostat right. that's in my house. And I got to set on love, peace, patient, happiness, and joy. Everybody household should have a rhythm. Your household should have a beat. And if any time your house is off beat, men, it's your responsibility to get your house off beat. Your house should have a rhythm. On beat. On, on beat. Yeah, your house should have a rhythm. Your house should have a beating as the man. If you say you the head, you should know how to lead. If you say you the head, you should know how to pray. If you say you the head, you should know how to pick up when your wife is sad. You being the head is not because you pay the bills or pay half the bills or if because you got a penis. If you the head, you should be able to make decisions that put the house in the best position to thrive. And that's it. Amen. Amen. So... Do you guys have any questions for us today? We This is our last segment. TikTok is the last segment of the day. So we're going to give you guys a few extra moments, extra minutes. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow around the same time. We're going to post tonight what times we'll be on live. So we were thinking of doing 11 Facebook, 1145 Instagram, or maybe 1150 to give us time mm -hmm. to log on to Instagram and then uh, maybe 11.55 mm -hmm. for uh, TikTok. And, and one of the topics we're going to discuss later this week is privacies, passcodes, and passwords. Man, that, that, that's a good topic because a lot of times, a lot of husbands and wives don't even know each other's passwords on their phone or don't have access to um, different bank accounts, and that drives a wedge within the marriage. So we're going to talk about that, give you all some insight and some um valuable tools to apply to your marriage to help get your marriage to the next level where you can be excited about seeing your spouse seeing your husband seeing your wife and doing things um that's fun together sir actually if you don't believe that god even exists i'm not even sure why you chimed into this live right. this live is definitely um not for you uh so you can just kindly log off or be blocked because this is for believers believers that are uh, serious about Jesus Christ and that love God. So we're, we're not here to a answer that question. That's a question you should ask God. Oh, you don't believe in him. But that's something that you should ask him personally. But but look, this, you, you believe the color red is red. Who told you that? Who, who told you red was red? You believe it. You, you don't you don't argue about that. You don't argue that this, 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 this coat I got on is black. Who told you this right here was black? It was written in a book that they read. That you believe. Who told you if you plug <laughs> um, some clippers into a socket, you'll get power? Somebody told you that that was in a book and you believed it. Yeah. So this is for people that believe in Jesus. Uh, the word of God is not up for debate. And we don't argue and we don't go back and forth. So this is not that platform. Have a good day. So, uh, we've been married 20, 20 years. years. This, we celebrated 20 years, May 26th. May. We, had a, we had another big, big wedding. wedding. It, was it, it, was, it was awesome. 20 years of Almost marriage. Almost 200 people. God is good. 20 years. Got married at the age of 21 and 22. Uh, I think that where we are now in our marriage, uh, we've never been here. Never, yeah. Uh, we, we're at the peak of our marriage, and it's... Uh, and it's fun. It's fun. It's... It's everything that we confessed for and more. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Camille. Um, sir, this is about marriage and people that believe in Jesus. Although we respect your opinion, it's just not welcome on this platform. We're taking questions and answers concerning marriage. Right. Good day. And like I tell people all the time, <laughs> Exercise your right to keep scrolling. Yes. If I see something on, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook that I don't agree with, I don't comment on it. I exercise my right to keep scrolling. Yes. So if it's something you don't agree with, you don't yes. believe in, exercise your you use this thumb right here and just keep scrolling. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah, but um we're not gonna address that anymore. We're just right. Appreciate that. You know, the block ministry is very strong over here. We do not care. At all. <laughs> 
So anyway, um, thank you. Camille, thank you so much. And um, Talisha, thank you so much for sharing everything that that uh, we have going on. Love Under the Influence is a very, very powerful, powerful um, tool that, let me block him. Have a good day, sir. You are blocked. And ministry is so real. Blocked. All right, we're not doing no back and forth. Okay, so somebody asks us, is bat baptism necessary to be saved? No. No. Uh, the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. So receiving Jesus and making him uh, your personal Lord and Savior comes with confession of uh, with believing that he uh, died and rose again on your behalf and making him, making a decision to make him Lord of your life. Have you... Uh, Come to Christ. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Because if you haven't, we would love to pray the prayer of salvation um, with you today. Okay. No, we didn't get married straight out of high school. A few we, years. Are, we actually had three kids, three kids yeah, before so, we even got married. So it was a few years um, after that after we got that, married. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we had, I think Quinesia was four. JoJo was 10 months and Quinn was five. You say you're 26 with marriage not being big in generation. How do I keep the faith with wanting to be married? Just Tell stay, about our story. Just stay true to who you are. When we, when we first got married, it wasn't big enough. It wasn't big then either. It's still it's not, still not in, in, our, yeah. in our family. Like not, not, <laughs> none of my friends was, was was married. You know, like I said, never seen a successful marriage. But I just knew it was the right thing to do. And the Bible says, "He who finds a wife." finds a good thing and obtains favor from God. So my wife is my stimulus package. My wife is my favor. My wife is, is what I needed to get me to the next level in life and in the things of God. Right. So so your husband, who God already have prepared you, he's going to be lucky. Yeah. He's going to be blessed to find you. Why? Because you're going to add favor and flavor to his life. You're going to season everything that he has already going on and you're going to help enhance it and take it to the next level. So don't let anybody tell you that marriage is not beautiful. Marriage is a beautiful thing, especially when it's done the right, way. It's done the right way and, and it's with the right person before God, because you don't have to worry about, okay, this person is he sleeping with this person, sleeping with this person, sleeping with this person. It's now don't, I'm not saying that people don't cheat in marriage. I'm saying when you marry the right person, you don't have to worry, about, have to worry about those things mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. all. So God is going to send you a, a husband after his own heart that's going to love you like Christ loved the church right. and take care of you. It's, 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 going, it's going to be and, beautiful. And you got to make sure that in your singleness, you're not deceived. Right. Don't go after uh, somebody that tells you everything um, or that seems to, too good to be true. Not saying that they're lying, but just the Bible says to know the spirit by the spirit. So in your singleness, don't, don't um, be deceived, you know? Allow God to uh, guide you in your singleness, especially when it comes to dating. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, and don't, don't set standards that you cannot produce yourself. If you're, if you're saying they need to make six figures, how much do you make? Uh, if you're saying they need to not live with their mom, you live with your mom. Mm -hmm. If you're saying they need to have an 800 credit score. Your credit score can't be 350. So we have to make sure that um, the standard that we're um, expecting is the same standard that we can back up. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, y'all. I didn't see all these questions. Let me get to them. What happens if the marriage didn't work? Now you're going through a divorce. Is the marriage repairable? Talk about that. Do you both still want the divorce? And if so... God can still rebuild you outside of that marriage. Mm -hmm. So don't give up hope, but seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. And Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over Miss Brown right now. We pray, God, that your hand will be upon her, Lord. We pray right now against any spirit of division right now. We renounce every curse that may have been spoken against her this day. And we pray, God, that your hand will soothe the pain and comfort her heart. And that you, God, will lead her and guide her into all spiritual truths this day. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will show yourself strong in her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
my church are great people and live by the word, but they believe that baptism is necessary. Mm -mm. Well, even if they do believe that baptism is necessary, are they talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Or are they talking about water baptism? Because you can still have Jesus without both. Mm -hmm. But there is benefits. Baptism is like a rededication. Mm -hmm. It's like a cleansing, spiritual cleansing. That's what that is. Now, the evidence of speaking in tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're praying the mysteries of God and the power of God. So it is a tool that's already in you when you uh, receive Jesus. But the evidence from that is the tongues, the evidence that the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, on the inside of you. Okay, I'm sorry. I, was, I don't know why I didn't see these questions. Did we wait until we got married? <laughs> No. no. We co we, Child, no. We, yeah, we, we, we wasn't... We, no. We was heathens. Yeah. We was heathens when we got married. And uh, if you guys want to see our full testimony, some of it is actually on our page, on our TikTok page. Mm -hmm. And you can go to uh, Your World, uh, Escaping the Trap House, Your World with Pastor uh, Cruffalo Dollar. You can see our spiritual dad has our testimony on his Your World uh series and, and and that's why i tell now now i tell people all the time pay attention to the warning yeah, signs i'm not saying that 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 you that you did that you did or didn't identify them but sometimes but yeah. before you marry a person you got to make sure that you pay attention to the warning signs pay attention to how he treats his mom pay attention if he have kids to how he treats yeah. his kids you how don't do deserve he, to be right. abused by anyone how do he act when he get mad how do he react when certain situations you have to pay attention to those things because if he act that way before you got married, when yeah. you get, it's, it's the same person okay. going to show up. Even if you feel deceived, don't don't make the devil make you feel like you're stupid because mm -hmm. you're not. You're not. The right thing to do is get out while you can. Right. Any type of abuse is not acceptable. not acceptable. Mental abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse. When you're dealing with somebody that has a gambling problem and keeps putting you in situation that could end you and your kids evicted. We have got to talk about this stuff in our community. Either you're going to get help or we're going to help you out the door. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you, you, you're you not going to stay here and, and tell me because I love God, I got to let you lay hands on me. Right. No, God forbid. So TikTok, it's been real today. I hope that you guys, um, uh, have a blessed day, and Pastor D is going to pray us out. Um, see you guys tomorrow, same time. Write down your questions. I'm telling you, tell somebody about this live. Tell somebody about 31 Days of Marriage. If you guys have not followed us on YouTube, follow our YouTube, Open Wings Ministries, and also follow us on Facebook, Open Wings Ministries, and follow us on Instagram, at Open Wings M. God bless you guys. Pastor D is going to uh, take us out, uh, will lead us out in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, this day for being alive and among the living. I thank you, Father God, for blessing each and every person that logged on. I thank you, Father God, this day that your favor goes before them in every situation, in every circumstance, opening up doors, rearranging, and changing things in their life. I thank you, Father God, that everything they set their hands to do is anointed to prosper. I thank you, Father God, they will walk into their purpose on purpose this day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Peace.